This video is brought to you by Cooler Master Mobile, featuring the Jazz Pro Notebook Stand. Check it out at mobile.coolermaster-usa.com. Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the HTC One. Now we've already seen a One X and a One S and a One X Plus, but this is just one. That's all there is to it. So they have gone instead of sort of a, a hedged bets, multi-tiered phone strategy and they're saying, okay, nope, this is it. This is gonna incorporate all of the best technology that we can build. The shell itself, so the aluminum frame, the aluminum body that it uses has 200 minutes minimum on a machine for each individual phone that's produced. So to put this in the appropriate context, those machines cost tens of thousands of dollars potentially for high-end CNC machines and they are occupying 200 minutes each. They had to put a bunch of advanced technique techniques into it just to manufacture this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put it down here and we're going to start, actually I'm not going to put it down here, we're going to start with a size comparison. So compared to the HTC 8X, it is actually a very similar size in spite of the fact that the screen is a little bit larger at 4.7 inches. So if I go ahead and turn it on, so I'm just going to try and get an HTC logo on the screens here. There we go, you'll see it goes a little bit closer to the edge. There's the sound when it boots up. Then the 8X, so that's a Windows phone. This is an Android phone and it runs HTC's Sense 5.0. All right, so by comparison, here's a Galaxy Note 2. We should probably also do thickness comparisons here as well. I'm not going to put it quite up against the other phone because this is Diesel's and I'm sure he'd freak out if he saw me doing that. So it's much smaller than a Note 2, however the resolution is actually higher. This is a 1080p Super LCD 3 phone. Now I've seen Super LCD 2 and Super LCD 3. This is a Galaxy S3 by the way guys. The S4 is a little bit bigger, also has a 1080p screen. And Super LCD 3 is absolutely better than Super LCD 2, especially with respect to color shift. So they both have pretty vibrant colors, good text, all that stuff. Here's an iPhone 4 by the way guys. There's a size comparison there. But Super LCD 3 doesn't really shift the colors as you move around and look at it from different angles up and down. So here's is a 1S. So that's a previous generation phone, not quite a flagship like the Droid DNA. So this is only one of the first, uh, one of the first two or three phones on the market that has a 1080p display. It also has the all-new Snapdragon S600 platform. So that includes a 1.7 gigahertz quad-core processor, wireless AC, an Adreno 320 GPU, as well as two gigs of memory. So we're into the setup wizard. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started and we'll be back in a moment. So now let's take a really close look at the phone itself. There are a few things about it that are particularly innovative. So number one is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna hold it in portrait, then I'm gonna go bam, landscape, because these two speakers right here are stereo speakers with what HTC is calling boom sound. So boom sound is pretty much their way of saying it actually has sound that will actually be usable in the context of sitting and looking at your phone like this and watching a movie, for example. This makes perfect sense because if you look at something like an iPhone 4, which has one port for audio that comes out of the bottom, or even something like a, an 8X that has one speaker on the back of the phone, how many times have you done this where you're cupping your hand behind the phone in order to direct any noise at your face? So boom sound looks incredibly cool. They've also added a 1080p front facing camera in addition, so that's a 2.1 megapixel still, 1080p 30fps video camera in addition to the 4 megapixel 1080p 30fps rear camera. So hold on a minute, why did I just say 4 megapixel? They're calling this ultra pixel. So rather than having lots of tiny, tiny, micro, dense, dense pixels, what the HTC has gone totally in the opposite direction of the regular industry trend and gone, okay, no, we're gonna put bigger pixels in the phone because those will actually be able to capture more light because they're larger and should give you better low light performance. And from what I've seen sort of looking around so far, it's actually working. So in spite of fewer pixels, you're able to get better dynamic range. And oh yeah, so it's got a one third inch sensor as well as an F 2.0 lens that gives you more light transmission and a larger sensor to capture the light on as well. So this is a very different way of going about it. In fact, if you look at HT, the HTC One 
product page on HTC's website, you'll see that they don't even list how many megapixels it is because they feel it shouldn't be about that. It should be about what actual quality are you getting out of the images you're taking. Now, one of the other things that's changed about the front here is that instead of having three buttons, there are two buttons. So there's a back button and a home button instead of a recent app button. You can double click the home button to access your recent apps, and then you can hold it down to get to Google Now. So that's the way that that functionality is enabled. But uh, so it's a little bit different They've also added their HTC Sense 5.0 UI. So there are, there are some intricacies to it. It works well with the apps that they include. So another thing they've changed about the camera is you can use a mode called ZOE, Z-O-E, in order to take about four or five stills as well as a several second 1080p video. So part of their, their whole thing here is they want it to be more like sort of like a Harry Potter type picture. So you're capturing a moment as opposed to just a still. So they've included a management application, a gallery for it, but it's a very cool concept. I haven't tried it yet, but it sounds neat. So instead of just taking a picture, you get a little bit of the lead up, you get the smile, and then you get a little bit of whatever it happens to be. Very, very neat stuff. So let's keep moving around the phone. On this side, we find not a whole lot. Just a spot for a micro SIM. Other than that, you can see just the beautiful finishing on the phone with the aluminum backing as well as the beveled aluminum front that meets seamlessly with the Gorilla Glass 2 front. So it should be extremely durable and it looks fairly drop resistant as well because the glass doesn't go right to the edge. There is a little bit of a buffer zone, although that's not to say that if you dropped it directly on the glass, it wouldn't break. On the top, we find a headphone microphone combo jack as well as, check this out, so the power button is not only a power button, but also an IR emitter and receiver. So you can use it as a universal remote with any infrared devices. Very, very cool little innovation, and it doesn't detract from the overall look of the device either. On this side, we find a volume rocker, and what I like about it is it's a little bit, it's, it's flush at or slightly recessed. So when you pick up the phone, because it's a little bit wider here at the, at the back of it, you can pick it up easily without accidentally triggering the volume buttons, which is a problem that I had with the 8X during my 30-day Windows Phone trial. On the bottom, we find a USB slash MHL port. So that allows it to also output HDMI signals to compatible MHL devices. Finally, there's a little, uh, oh, sorry, there's a, uh, nope. That's it. There's on the back a little noise cancelling microphone and an overall very symmetrical looking design. This is a solid piece of aluminum back here and you've got a couple of cool things. So there's a flash right next to that camera I talked a lot about before as well as a little Beats Audio logo and an HTC logo. Now the Beats Audio logo, maybe this is part of just the, the general I don't know if it's Beats Audio or just part of HTC's internal direction, but the audio is significantly better on the device than what you'll find on a typical smartphone, whether that's the headphones, which have a reasonable headphone amp on them, which is great, but also those front-facing speakers that I talked about before. Accessory-wise, they also include a bit of a more premium-looking headphone headset than you're generally used to seeing. So it's got a non-tangle cable. It's got a red and black color scheme. Where have we seen that before, guys? And of course, it includes three different sizes of ear tips. They are IEM, so they're meant to go right into the ear canals. They also include, at least with our demo model, not to say the retail one won't have more stuff, a SIM card tool, as well as a micro USB cable charger, a cable and a charger. All right, so this will be the shot where I finish up with all the other little things that I forgot. So for one thing, it's got a 468 pixel per inch density. This is pretty much the most, I believe this is the most dense display on the market for a smartphone because it is a slightly smaller screen than there was on the Droid DNA. It's only 4.7 inch, making it a little bit easier for someone like me to use. In spite of my small hand syndrome, I'd say already that just because of the shape of it, it's easier to hold onto than the 8X was. So since this is the device I'll be using for my 30 day Android I switched trial, I'm really glad that that's uh, something that I discovered about it. On the back, this isn't something you can see, but it does have NFC so you can easily exchange data, apps, or whatever else you want. However, there is no wireless charging built into this phone for those of you who were hoping to see that option. You pretty much cannot open it up. It has a 2300 milliamp hour battery though, so hopefully that's enough for you. Um, 
And same thing with respect to not being able to open it up, you can't add a micro SD card for more expansion. So you're going to be stuck with either the 32 gigs or 64 gigs that were included with your phone. It comes with Android 4.1.2, but it is upgradable to 4.2. And they include the HTC Sync Manager to facilitate moving, whether it's from iOS or from another Android device, to this new platform. And I think that pretty much wraps it up for this unboxing and first look. Thank you for checking it out on Linus Tech Tips. And as as always, don't forget to subscribe.